There are many myths and misconceptions as to the fire resistance requirements between a residence and a garage. The separation between a house and the garage is not a fire rated assembly. Fire resistance requirements are basic. Attached and detached garages within three feet of the dwelling usually require the installation of an appropriate thickness of sheetrock on any combustible surfaces on the house side to provide limited resistance to the spread of a fire. The garage floor must be non-combustible as well. In spite of the simple requirements, it's not unusual for a home inspector to find a number of defects in the fire resistance between a garage and a home. Here's a combustible exterior house wall that's exposed in a garage. And at this garage, the opening would allow a fire to enter the attic area over the living space. If there's a habitable room over the garage, such as a bonus room, safety guidelines dictate that there should be sheetrock of an appropriate thickness on the garage ceiling and on the bearing wall that supports the ceiling framing. Often the original contractor did a satisfactory job of installing the sheetrock, but over the years, homeowners have modified the original design and unknowingly created problems. Maybe they've replaced a sheetrock attic hatch cover with a flammable material. Or they've installed an attic pull-down ladder and in so doing created a breach in the fire resistance at a ceiling. Openings and damage breaches in the fire resistance are common at not only ceilings but at walls as well. Sometimes the crawl space hatch that leads down into the substructure of the home is in the garage and the hatch cover is made of a combustible material. Wiring, plumbing pipes and steel vents and ducts may pass through a garage, but openings around the penetrations must be filled with an approved material, such as fire-resistant caulking. Doors between the house and the garage provide some resistance to fire, but such doors do not require a fire rating. A 1 and 3 8 inch thick solid core wood, steel or honeycomb core steel door will satisfy the basic requirements. Or alternatively, any door that's factory labeled as 20 minute fire resistance rated is considered to be suitable for the application. Here's one the inspector sees time and time again. The homeowner cut pet door is the problem in what had been an otherwise acceptable door. Occasionally, typically at older homes, the inspector finds doors that are just plain not suitable for the application. Or maybe the door is satisfactory, but it does not reliably close, like this door that's hanging open at new construction. There have been different requirements over the years, but today a garage house door should be equipped with a self-closing device and a weather stripping to assure a tight seal when the door is shut. Here are some additional safety tips. A garage may not lead directly into a bedroom. Heating appliances, unless they're equipped with today's sealed combustion chambers, must be elevated at least 18 inches off the garage floor to guard against potentially igniting flammable vapors. These same elevation requirements may apply to laundry appliances as well if they're located in the garage. Consult with an appliance dealer or an appliance installation professional. Any ducts that run through the garage must be made of sheet steel and the ducts may not open into or terminate in the garage. Whoops, this one's a problem. For specific information on garage house fire resistance, contact the building or planning department that has jurisdiction over your community. Mm -hmm.